Hi, I'm Joshua Carroll. I'm a product manager for Streamlet Snowflake. And I'm really excited to talk with you today about Frosty, an LLM-powered chat app that you can build yourself with Streamlit that allows you to use natural language to answer questions and do data exploration on your data in Snowflake. My name is Caroline Frasca, and I work on developer experience for the Streamlit open source Python library at Snowflake. Let's get started. So as I mentioned today, what we're planning to build is this chatbot, which you can see kind of a GIF here of the final output that is going to have access to a particular data table in Snowflake based on some data in the marketplace, which will allow us to ask questions and get answers uh, on that table. So basically the tools that we're gonna use to do this, obviously large language models, as well as Streamlit, which is uh, an open source Python library that enables developers to quickly create deploy and share web apps from Python scripts. With this, we're going to use the OpenAI large language model, particularly this is running on GPT 3.5 Turbo. And we're going to show you how you can build the web application with Streamlit. We're going to use the ST experimental connection feature from Streamlit to connect to Snowflake, just a couple lines of code, build this chatbot with Streamlit's new chat UI. And we're going to use session state to store the chatbot's message history. So we're going to show you how to do all of that. Some of the prerequisites for this, uh, you will need an account admin role in Snowflake. You can also use a Snowflake trial account, which is what we'll show for this quick start. Uh, you'll need an API key for OpenAI. Uh, you could also use another large language model pretty easily, as well as basic knowledge of SQL, database concepts and objects, familiarity with Python, the ability to install and run software on your computer, uh, as well as VS Code or another IDE of your choice. And we're actually going to show some of this GitHub code spaces. So that would be another option you know, if that works better for you. Now we're going to prepare the development environment. You're going to install Miniconda to manage a separate environment. You're going to create a folder for your project. We're going to call it LLM Chatbot, but you can name it whatever you like. And then finally, we're going to create a Conda environment for the project. We're going to install the appropriate packages, including Snowpark for Python, Streamlit, and OpenAI. Okay, now we're going to access the data on the Snowflake Marketplace. So as you may know, Snowflake Marketplace has visibility on a wide variety of data sets from third-party data stores that you can use to build your apps and enrich your existing databases. So we're going to do this in SnowSite. Uh, again, if you don't have an account, you can sign up for a free trial here and, and walk through the steps there. But in general, you'll go to app.snowflake.com to do that. And we'll obtain this data set from the Snowflake Marketplace. So you will want to make sure that you're set as account admin, uh, which is the role that allows you to install from the marketplace. And we've got a link here to get to this data set, which is the CyberSend Financial and Economic Essentials. So just looking here, I'm in the marketplace now in the account, and you can see the Financial and Economic Essentials package that we're going to install. Um, I've already got it installed in this environment, so I won't go through that stuff again, but you can do it yourself. Um, and then once you've got that installed, uh, you should be able to get to a query data worksheet, which will allow you to run some queries and make sure that it's working appropriately. Um, I'll walk through that in just a second. Once that's done, then you'll want to prep the database. So there's a little bit of preparation to uh, make a couple of views that are appropriate for use with LLM that we've done here. And there's code in the repo to set up those views. And I'll show you that in just a second, basically to create something that's easy for the large language model to parse and, and run those queries. So I'll show that really quick. So here we are, we've installed the financial essentials data set. So we're able to run this query and see um, some information about the percent uninsured for all these banks. And then for creating these views, we did create a database and schema here. You may want to use one of your own, but this will allow us to create this attributes view, which has some of the attributes that we're going to show that we're going to make available to the model, including total assets, percent insured, real estate loans, etc. And then we're going to create this time series view that combines a couple of views that are in the underlying data set, which will be the view that actually is queried by the model. So just to show a couple of sample results from that. Basically, you can see it's got the name of a financial institution, where they're located, and then a variety of variables for particular years, and the value of those variables, as well as the missions. So we'll make all of that available to the model to build and run queries. Now we're going to set up our development environment for the Streamlit app. First, we're going to run an example Streamlit app, and we're going to do so by heading over to the command line and just entering Streamlit Hello, 
which will open an example Streamlit app in your browser. Next, we're going to configure our secrets file, which will securely store our credentials for both Snowflake and OpenAI. First, we're going to create a folder in our directory called .streamlit. Inside the .streamlit folder, we'll create a file called secrets.toml. In the secrets.toml file, we'll copy and paste the formatting below for both the Snowflake and OpenAI credentials, and we'll replace the actual credentials with our credentials. Finally, we're going to copy and paste this code for this app, which will validate our credentials by making calls to the packages and passing them the credentials that we stored in our secrets file. We're going to run that file by entering streamlit run in the name of the file. All right, so we've got the file here and here in our GitHub Codespaces environment, we set up secrets.toml. I'm not gonna show the actual secrets obviously in this recording, but you can see the example here. And with that, we should be able to run that validate credentials file. And if we wait just a second, that should load. And we should be able to see that everything is configured correctly. you can see we we're able to run a query so we have that configured correctly and we got the response back from OpenAI as we expected so that seems to be working. Now we're going to build a simple version of a chatbot application. This version will just pass user inputted messages to GPT 3.5 and it will return GPT 3.5's response. We'll build on this app's complexity in later sections. We're going to break down the file by snippets and talk about what each one does, but if you want to skip to the end, you can also just copy and paste the complete file. First, we're going to import the necessary packages for the file. It will give the app a title. We will initialize the chatbot's message history by adding the first message we want the chatbot to display to uh, Streamlit's feature session state. We will prompt the user to enter chat input by using Streamlit's st.chat input feature. Once the user has entered a message, we'll add that message to the chat history by storing it in session state. We will display the chatbot's message history by iterating through the values stored in session state, and we will print each value. Finally, if the last message is not from the assistant, we'll send that message to GPG 3.5. We'll display a spinner while we're trying to get the response. And then finally, we'll use st.write to display the chatbot's response in the UI, and we'll append that response to the chat history. We can run this Streamlit app again via Streamlit run in the name of the file. All right, so let's try this out. So we've got our app here with all the steps that Carolyn just showed, and we should be able to Streamlit run our simple chatbot, and it should pop up the running bot. So here it is. All right. So what is Streamlit? And while thinking about that, maybe we should ask it one other question too. Any ideas? What is Snowflake? This chatbot is nailing it. But as you can see, it's really only got general information here that's available to GPT. So let's add a little bit more to query some of our own data. All right, so now the really fun part. We're going to add some prompt engineering and SQL extraction to get our chat app to run over our data and stuff like that we imported and set up before. So the first thing that we're gonna do is create this prompt file that's going to generate system prompt that's gonna help the chatbot get oriented, give it context about the table, and help it to write SQL queries that we'll be able to extract and display and then actually run against the database and see results. So there's a number of rules here that we're creating. So you can see we're giving it some information about the table name, the ability to query for some metadata, and describing the table so that it understands what's in there. We're helping it to be oriented, that it's the SQL expert named Frosty, and what its goals are and responding to the user. We'll inject some of that table context from the above sections in here, and then we'll give us some rules uh, once again, to kind of help it uh, write good queries and respond in a good way. And as you'll see in a couple minutes, uh, we're actually going to ask it to write its own self-introduction and some sample questions. And 
you can see here we're actually not really doing much to lead it about these example questions, but the results seem to be pretty good. So uh, here's the function where we're going to get the table context um, and actually run some of those queries against the information schema to kind of help it see what's in the table, what the available columns and types of those columns are, uh, generate that in a way that's formatted for GPT to understand it, get some more metadata about variable names that are available, um, and finally, this get system prompt method that we're going to call in the actual app that will kind of generate this table context and then format the prompt with that information. So you can see we built this file such that it can actually run independently to generate the system prompt in the Streamlit app. So let's try that really quick and just make sure that the prompt is working the way we expect. So I'm going to run the prompts file that we have up here. We've copied that into our code space. And if that worked, as we expect, it should pop up an app here just a second with the prompt. So it's running those queries to generate the table context. And then you can see that it's output the prompt. So this is what's going to get passed to the actual chatbot. So we won't show this in the um, in the chat messages, obviously, because we don't really want the user to see this necessarily. But it's got all those columns that are available, information about the different variables, and then those rules to tell it to, to write SQL that we can extract. So we've got that. So coming back to building the chatbot, so we're going to create this file called frosty or app.py, where we're going to put the actual app logic. And we're going to extend the chatbot that we showed in the previous step uh, with this additional logic that will allow us to extract and run these queries. So you can see, instead of sort of this how can I help message, we're actually generating the system message to initialize the, uh, the app and the bot. Uh, we have sort of similar logic for prompting and appending the user's response, or the user's question, rather. Uh, we're not going to show system messages. And as you'll see in a minute, we're going to get some results from running queries that we're going to show in ST data frame inside of the chat message if those are available. So once again, if there is not a last message from the assistant, we're going to generate a new response. Uh, this time, instead of doing all the response at once, we're actually going to stream the results. You can see there's a little bit of extra logic here that allows us to get that token by token streaming in Streamlit, which is a nicer experience for the user than just showing a spinner. And then once we've got that response, we're going to see if we can parse out a SQL query from the response. And then if we have that, we're going to use st.experimental connection, which allows us to really easily just do con.query to run that query and get back the result in a data frame that we can uh, render and then store for future runs. So tying that all together, uh, we get this nice app, which will kind of orient the user and then allow us to ask some questions. So let's take a look. Um, so once again, we've got our, let me close this out. We've got our Frosty app with all that code that we just showed. And I'm going to run that app, and we will see how it works. All right, so we've got the app here. As you can see, we've got the token by token streaming where it's introducing itself giving us that information about the table, and then it's got some of these sample questions. Um, OK, let's see. Let's try this one. Total number of financial entities in the state of California. And as you'll see, every time you run this, it's going to give you different um, example questions. They're not always perfect, but it's quite good. And I know there's a year filter on this, so I'm going to add that uh, so that we get something a little bit clearer. So you can see it's written the SQL query for us. It's going to do this count running against that table that we provided. It's checking the state filter and the year filter, and this looks pretty good. So yeah, so we see there were 128 financial entities in California that were registered in 2019 in the database. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and we will run some more queries here in just a second. Now we're going to explore the data via natural language. Frosty, which financial institution had the highest total assets in the year 2020? Let's find out. Well, it looks like it's JP Morgan Chase. Life. Frosty, what was the total value of all real estate loans for banks located in Massachusetts in 2020? It's 
just got to think about this one a little bit more. Oh, that looks pretty realistic. Yeah, so that's uh, about $100 billion, it looks like. Rossi, how have the total securities value changed over time for financial institutions in New York City? Let us find out. Nice. Oh, I like how it grouped that for us so that it will just get the totals. Okay. Yeah, it's nice. Seeing that grow. Congratulations. So you've gone through this tutorial with us and you've built an LLM-powered chatbot that's capable of translating your natural language questions to SQL queries and actually running those queries on data stored at Snowflake to get you some answers and insights. Um, as you can probably tell, this tutorial is really just a starting point for exploring the possibilities of these LLM-powered chat interfaces for data exploration and question answering. Uh, a few of the next things that you might want to try. Of course, maybe the most obvious, update the bot to run against your private data in Snowflake or other relevant Snowflake marketplace data sets. Uh, we've tried to make this really easy for you by putting the table-specific logic in the app really all just at the top of that prompts.py file. So it should be fairly straightforward for you to swap it out with your own tables and start playing around. You can also think about adding more capabilities to the app, uh, such as using the LLM to choose from a set of more than one table or summarize the returned results, or even write streamlet code to visualize those results. Uh, you could also think about extending it by using a library like Langchain to convert Frosty into an agent that has improved chain of thought reasoning and is better able to respond to errors. Finally, you should think about preparing to run this in Streamlit and Snowflake, a new Snowflake capability that's currently in private preview that allows you to run all of this inside of your Snowflake environment within the security and governance boundary. Uh, all the functionality that we showed here will soon be available in Streamlit and Snowflake, and especially when you pair that with the new external access feature, which is also in private preview, it's really going to simplify your access to an external LLM like GPT um, to be able to run all of this inside of Sys. So check out the Frosty session in Snowflake Summit 2023 and other sessions from Summit and other content about powering your Snowflake apps with LLMs. If you'd like to learn more about the technologies used in your app, including Streamlit Safe Chat UI, ST Experimental Connection, and other features, be sure to check out the links at the end of this guide. These links will also be included in the video description as well for your reference.